We're here in Mill Valley, Northern California, outside of San Francisco, with no other than Mr. Bob Weir at the Sweetwater, where it all started in this town, right? Yep. Okay, so what is the difference between Further, the other ones, and the dead? Well, in this case, we're in the dead, we've got the core four, the two drummers, Mickey and Billy, and, and Phil, the bass player, and me. And then we're going to bring on, you know, um, well, we got Trey Anastasio, and uh, he's a good guitar player. Yeah, he is. And we got uh, my keyboard player, Jeff Comenti, but also another keyboard player, uh, Bruce Hornsby, who's a, you know, a wonderful, nice. wonderful piano great player singer, and great a great singer. Player, yeah. You know, and he gets it. We picked up, you know, Jerry and I and the rest of us all, we listened to a lot of music, a lot, you know, mostly American musical heritage stuff, but we're all working off the same influences, all the, all, you know, all our heroes are the same guys. It's a big deal too when you, when you have, what, a song that can go 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. You take a guy that's listening to the wrong stuff, tries to take it over there, <laughs> and it doesn't come they're back as good. It doesn't quite come back around the same way, does it? There, there are going to be a few of those moments, <laughs> you know, and then, then we work it out. God, it's just so weird to be in a band like that. I just can't imagine how you could ever settle for less. Well, I tell you, it, it kept things interesting. That's one of the reasons we were able to stay together as long as we were. The other was we, we could make each other laugh. Yeah. So the, back in those days when the whole peace and love movement was happening and hate Ashbury, I mean, people walked down the street, t you know, everybody was high, right? I mean, everybody's well, on I acid, and everybody's smoking dope, walking down the street. I and mean, we take cops, acid once a week or something like that. Yeah, but you take enough where it lasts a whole week, though, right? <laughs> I mean, I tell you what, we were smoking a bit of pot. That was about it. There, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't so much about the drugs or the dope or anything like that. It was about Really, it was, everybody living there was kind of artsy. There was a spirit in the air and everybody was creative. We were making music, people were making paintings. It was an artistic kid's ghetto. And it wasn't the drugs that were making us, Wiggy. It was, it was what we were doing. Um, for us, it was the music. What you guys were doing in San Francisco influenced the Beatles. Yeah, it got that far. You know what far. I mean? It got yeah. that far, exactly. I mean, that to me, that always blows my mind. It brought me up here. I, I wouldn't live in San Francisco if it wasn't been for the San Francisco scene. Anybody, every band, you'd play whatever you wanted, right? I mean, didn't it feel that way? It was, it was pretty freedom. much whatever came to mind. Whatever, Musical freedom. Whatever, you know, we'd wait for that wave to come and catch it. And, That's a uh, big deal, though, for musicians, even today. We'd listen to what was on the radio, or Wilson Pickett, whatever, and uh, that's great. Let's see if we can cop that groove. Or, you know, Buck Owens. Buck Owens was a big <laughs> We'll see if we get to Buck Owens. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Weir is in the house. In case you didn't know who I was talking to. But with, with that statement alone, just tells a lot about you. You're the most open-minded musician I've ever met. You're a genius. You're a genius, Bob, in more ways than one. But, you know. <laughs> so, Bob, why did all these people live in Mill Valley in San Francisco? I mean, we used to walk down the street, see Bill Graham chewing some guy out for parking his car wrong, right? <laughs> Carlos Santana come down the street blessing people with flowers and stuff. And well, Mill Valley was a different place back then. You know, when when we moved in, it was a it was a an artist ghetto because yeah, no stop signs. All the places were getting old and and, uh, and the rents were cheap, and so the artists moved in. It was a bohemian enclave. And a lot of guys, half our musician friends that used to make a lot of money in their heyday and then their, their career slowed down and then they would sell their house here and get so much money for it from what they paid for it. They right. could move up to Oregon and live you know, the same lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> without working. Well, Bob, we're the only guys that aren't smart enough to do that. <laughs> I, think, I think the reason is because we still work. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll drink to that. Mm. Still okay. working. Yeah. So as many musicians as you've played with, you know, the dead, everybody's jammed with the dead. You've had so many people come and go through it. You, you're a guy I'll, like, I'll answer the question already. I don't know. You don't know who the favorite musician you've ever no. played with? Yeah, you, maybe, maybe, oh no, Johnny Johnson. See, there you go. He was lying to me. He was saying he, he didn't know. Now he knows. Johnny Johnson. He finally came to me. What made that so memorable to you? Well, Johnny, Johnny taught me and the, and the guys in Rat Dog, the, the, uh, the band I was playing with, with him in it. Uh, he taught us how to play rock and roll, you know, real rock and roll, you know, because... What year was this? This was late 
late 90s. He was in the band for you a couple learned of years. How to, was it till the late 90s yeah. till you learned how to play rock and roll, Bob? Yeah. I didn't know what Oof. rock and roll was. And, you know, Johnny Johnson was a guy, um, Chuck Berry joined the Johnny Johnson band back in the 50s, early, mid-50s. And it became the Chuck Berry outfit. But Chuck, Johnny was the guy who, just by himself, started playing shuffle against straight. And it's mathematically impossible. You know, yeah. you, you, the mathematical subdivisions just don't work out. They can't. But Johnny was the guy who invented that. And then Little Richard picked up on it. And it was piano driven to, be, to begin with. And it was Johnny who did it. He, and he taught us how to play that stuff. And, you know, typically we would do it. We had Rob Wasserman playing upright bass, and, you know, thoom, boom, ba doom, boom. Yeah, and somebody right. playing straight, the drummer playing sort of non committal, piano player hammering, uh, hammering the shuffle, and uh, Ch Chuck Bray was playing real straight on his guitar. The tension, you know, it was rock and roll. And these, you know, that turned into rock music, and the, but there's no roll to it. There you have it, folks. There you have it. I've never heard it explained like that, but I know that Chuck, if you try to talk to Chuck about Johnson, he, would, he gets all upset because everyone says that he totally stole his style, well, I, or, or he was influenced. So, I mean, I've heard that stuff before, too, but you actually played with Johnny. Oh, yeah, wow. for, Big deal. for a couple of years. Good old Sweetwater, here we are, the good old Sweetwater. How the times have changed. You want to go play some music? Let's do it. What do you think, Loose Lucy? Sure. What key? Key at E. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be E flat for you, right? Well, you mean, are you saying I sing flat? No, I don't. <laughs> We're going to see. Huh? But, Bob, that's a good groove we got going in. Let's just yeah. keep it loose and see. This ain't about no freaking, you know. This is about just what we're doing. This is the blues. So, here's, here's your figure two, three. It's E diminished. Yeah, it's a diminished, okay? Yeah. 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 Okay, you go ahead and kick it. And Bob, kick it up. Thing called Loose Lucy. <laughs>
<laughs> Bob, we're in the house! <laughs> and, and my good friend Sammy, my, uh, my uh, eccentric neighbor Sammy. <laughs> oh boy, I guess I could say the same thing. Bob, you took the words right out of my mouth. You know what I mean? You know what I love playing about, playing with you, Bob? One of the great things is that you seem like you're really just loose and goose and ready to go for anything, but you do like to make things right and not have mistakes and stuff where mistakes to me are just, it's say, no, it already happened, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob likes going, no, start over again. That's, that's kind of more of a, you're more a perfectionist, uh, more of a professional musician than I am, I think. If that's the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. You bet. Thank you.